Hi, second graders. We're back to reading Guinea Dog today. We are on chapter 14, which is called, I guess I forgot to zip it up again. Do you know what he's talking about? His backpack, right? So it is your guinea pig, Lorena said, looking down at Fido, who had just joined us in the front yard. She was standing next to my laceless left shoe up on her hind legs, looking up at us, her tongue hanging out. She had escaped the backpack yet again. You can't bring her to the rec center, Lorena said. No pets allowed. It's the rules. She's not my pet, Lorena, I said. She, once again, the lie wouldn't come to me. She followed you home, Lorena said. Right. What are you calling her? Why do you think she's a girl? Lorena set her hand on her hip and rolled her eyes at me. This was supposed to be, supposed to mean something, I'm sure, but I had no idea what. Okay, her name is Fido, I said, and she's mine. But please don't tell anyone or the guys at school will kill me with jokes. Besides, we're not keeping her. My dad hates her. We're talking, we're taking her back to the pet store. As soon as we find it, it was all my mom's idea. I wanted a dog. Lorena crouched down and put her hand out. The million bracelets she always wears on her wrist bangled together. Fido sniffed her fingers and then licked them. Lorena giggled. Maybe I'll take her, she said. One of my hamsters died last month. What's that mean? It means my chinchilla needs a playmate. I was getting real nervous standing in my front yard talking to her and doing so with Fido, all in broad daylight. So I asked, can we go out back? I want anyone, I don't want anyone to see, see you with a guinea pig. She actually spelled out the whole word. It took forever. Or see you with a G-I-R-L. Oh, just come on. I set Fido down in the backyard. She warmed up to Lorena pretty fast. It was probably the smell of her chinchilla on her. How did your hamster die? I asked. Natural causes. Like lightning or something? She laughed so hard I about had a heart attack. No, he died of old age. So you don't want the skinny pig? I told you, I want a dog. So then can I have Fido? Strangely, I hesitated. I mean, I should have jumped all over that offer. But I said, I better check with my mom. I think she wants the refund. Lorena rolled her eyes again. I will pay you for her, duh. Are you rich or something? No, but I have been saving some money for a replacement since Amherst died. Amherst is the hamster? Gee, I don't know. Why don't you anagram it, Mr. Scrabble Expert? Oh, I get it. Good one. So do we have a deal? Your mom gets her money, and I get Fido. I don't need the cage, though. I have cages. Your mom could get a refund on the cage. What do you say we go talk to your dad about it? He can call your mom. Or does she work at home, too? She was so weird. She and Fido belong together. My mom works at Try Your Best Hardware. She'll be home about 5.30 or so. I'll talk to her about it then. Again, the girl rolled her eyes. Maybe they were loose or something. All right, put Fido away then. Let's go to the rec center before it's too late for the Scrabble Club. I can't leave Fido alone here with Dad. She drives him nuts, remember? Well, you can't bring her to the rec center. Then I guess I'll have to take a rain check, Lorena. She clucked her tongue. You're goofy, Rufus. She skipped away. I'll come by in the morning for my guinea pig, she called over her shoulder. I was confused for a second how she could be coming the next morning. Then I remembered it was Friday, and the next day was Saturday. But I was still pretty confused about a bunch of other things, including why I didn't jump at the chance to get rid of Fido. I decided the only thing to do was to get out on my bike. Riding it always helped me think. I packed Fido securely into my backpack so I wouldn't come home to a crabby daddy. Left the note on the magnetic pad on the fridge, went out to the garage, hopped on my bike, and hit the open road. Maybe it's the freedom to go where you want to as fast as you want to. Maybe it's all the oxygen and the sky and your heart and your muscles all pumping hard. Yeah, I know your heart is a muscle, so that wasn't really necessary to say, but not everybody knows that. It's so totally amazing that a bike stays up like it does while going so totally fast and making sharp turns, and even catching air, too, if you can do that kind of thing, which I can. It's like when you think about yourself and realize how incredible it is that you can do the things you do all the time. Walk, talk, run, eat, taste, see, pedal, jump, kick, blink. The brain is this amazing computer, and the body is this incredible machine, and they just run and run and run on like fuel that other, fuel that other machines. 
grow or kill. Animals, which are machines too, for you. Computers have to be plugged in or have batteries, but we just go and get our own fuel. Our body does. It's our machine. No machine can move the way ours does. Yeah, there are robots, but no robot can like play soccer even or ride a bike as good as me. Most of the time, you don't even think about how it all works. Your brain and your body are constantly doing all these amazing things. Most of the time, you just think about the stuff you're not doing or watch stuff or read or do stuff for school or just hang out. But your computer and your machine are working 24-7. So what I think happens when you work your body real hard, like riding your bike or playing soccer or whatever, is that you don't have very much energy left over in your brain for other kinds of thinking, like worrying or dreading and stuff, which is why riding your bike is so good at clearing your head. Even if all I do is bike around the curvy streets and cul-de-sacs of my neighborhood in the flat little town I live in, my problems start seeming really unimportant. What if word got out that I had a pet guinea pig? Would I be teased to death? Should I just give or sell Fido to Lorena? Why was I even hesitating? Didn't I still want a dog? All these questions buzzed around my brain for the first couple of blocks. Then they didn't, and this is what I figured out. It was fun being a kid on a bike with nowhere to go. Everything else could wait till my bike and me were back in the garage. Chapter for next time is called, I wasn't really thinking about where I was going. Where do you think Rufus might end up on his bike? Somewhere he doesn't want to be because he wasn't paying attention? Find out next time. Bye, second graders.